Shallow water hydrothermal systems are places on the seafloor where hot water and hot gases emanate through the sediments, through coral reefs, and uh, they are very similar to on land hot springs. Such systems are not found everywhere in the oceans. To have a shallow water hydrothermal system, we need something to heat up the water and probably more than 99% of the time the heat from volcanoes is responsible to heat up the water that percolates down into the crust, gets heated up and comes back towards the surface. We are going scuba diving to explore and study such systems and generally what we see are hot water slowly coming out of the sediments, uh, we find gas bubbles, small streams, big streams of gas and we also find uh, hydrothermal precipitates. They, these are minerals that fall out of the hot water and form deposits on the seafloor. So these are generally the three different features that are associated with shallow water hydrothermal activity. On the biological side, we also find the bacteria. The difference in temperature and the difference in chemistry between the hydrothermal waters and seawater, as well as the hydrothermal gases and seawater, allows for microbes to participate in oxidation and reduction reactions. We need to study uh, those systems because they are in near shore shallow water environments and those environments are very important for the development of most marine food chains. So if we are having such a hydrothermal system that uh, puts a variety of chemicals, some of them toxic, into the ecosystem, we may start altering a food chain at the very beginning. Many of the hydrothermal systems that we're studying are in coral reefs and one of the side effects is that we generate a relatively low pH environment around the hot springs and we can study now coral response to low pH and high temperature, meaning we can study coral response exactly to what we anticipate with global warming and global change and uh, change of ocean water chemistry in the next 100 years. I am studying mercury concentrations from hydrothermal systems from around the world. We are interested in hydrothermal systems because in terms of the global mercury model, uh, contributions from hydrothermal systems are fairly unknown. For this purpose, we take samples from surface waters, from pore waters, which is water within the sediments underneath the sea surface, and from onshore springs. And additionally, we take samples from the various gases that come from these systems and analyze those for gaseous mercury as well. We collected samples from the surface waters of the bay in order to ascertain whether or not the mercury from the hydrothermal system was flowing from the bottom waters up into the surface and therefore impacting the fisheries and coastal ecosystems there. To take liquid samples, we push a sampling probe into the sediment surface along with a temperature probe. The sample was then pulled by the syringe and temperatures were monitored in order to make sure that seawater was not being pulled down into the sediment. In terms of the gas sampling, we have a glass funnel that's attached by tubing to uh, a gas sample bag. Then this bag, once it's full, becomes positively buoyant and it ascends through the water column up to the surface where it's collected. Mercury concentrations of the fluids and the gases can be very high, so we're not sure if the mercury is remaining within the water, if it's going up into the air, or if it's um, attaching itself to sediment particles and falling back down uh, onto the sediment surface. <laughs> 